Periscope, how's everybody tonight? Replay viewer, skip ahead. If you don't want to hear me banter for about four or five minutes. And follow me if you're not following me. How's everybody tonight? What's good, Periscope? Hmm. How's everybody? Yo, Paul's candle. I forgot candle was on. Recorded DVR. It's up to you. <laughs> How's everybody doing tonight? Look at all the people coming into the room. What's going on, mother? It's Perry Pastor on the ones and twos. I'm here. I'm here in the flesh. Oh, you don't watch it? Okay. Blessings to everybody. Now we got 150 people in the room already. So invite followers. Make it 300. Make it 600. Everybody share. Share with everybody. Share on Twitter. Share on Facebook. Share to your enemies. <laughs> How's everybody tonight? It's a blessing. It's a blessing to be alive. And if you are sharing, that means God is not through with you. You're watching a Spurs game. I'll let you go in time enough so you can go watch it. Watch the rest of it. Look at the people coming in the room. Come on in the room. Jesus is my doctor. Hey, Wendy. He writes out all my scriptures in the room. Hello, everybody tonight. Look at these people of God. If you share, somebody just asks, you can swipe up on your on device. If it's an Android device, swipe left to right on an Apple device and hit share. Share to all your followers. Um, share to all your um, you know, social media sites. And... Um, Acousta shirt. I think it's Lacoste. I think that's the word you're looking for, my friend. Thank you guys for inviting. We're going to get ready, right in. Listen, I got some of these shirts left. Look at this. This is a real talk moment. You know, I give you all these all the time on my scope. Real talk moments. Go to unitywc.com. There are some left, but they always leave. So um, you, you have some, some sizes. You can go to unitywc.com and get this shirt. Let the shirt do the talking for you. The shirt is the publicity. All you need. All you need to do is point to a number when somebody walks in your face and let the shirt do the talking, ladies and gentlemen. Are y'all hearing me on tonight? Yes. So go get it. If it walks in your face, just look at one of them, any one of them. I promise you, any one will speak volumes to your life. Just because he's a man of God does not mean he's the man for you. Number one, just because he shouts in church and has a bow tie on like Louis Farrakhan does not mean he's the man of God for you. Just want y'all to understand, especially number three, my friend. A lot of you got this shirt, but some of you can get it a steal. It's available for you at my website, unitywc.com. You say, Pastor D, he looks good in church, Pastor D. He 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 wears a three-piece suit, Pastor D. He smells like Yves Saint Laurent. Doesn't mean he's the man for you. I just want y'all to understand that, ladies and gentlemen, okay? Unitywc.com. Y'all try to look at my shirt and read it. I ain't let y'all read it no more. Go buy it. All right, you're ready to start this scope. First timers, first timers. Um, first timers, type of one. Type of one if you're on for the first time. Type of one if you're on for the first time. <laughs> I got a women's conference coming up, ladies and gentlemen, June 2nd, June 3rd. We have finalized everything. And we're just going to clean up some things on next week. Come. What's going on, Rodney from Mississippi? First timers, God bless all these first timers. God bless the, the person that's been, been on for 15 times. God bless um, all you people that have been skipping my scope for coming back. Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, how do I get people to watch me? You can just uh, share to your followers, my friend. Thank you guys. Some of you come back. Thanks some of you for reconnecting. Y'all been missing church and y'all just been skipping church. I know y'all backslid, but thank y'all. We welcome everyone back to Periscope Worship Center, Full Gospel Baptist Church of God in Christ. Church with a long name. We give amazing results. It's good to have everybody on tonight. I'm about ready to start this thing. So if y'all are ready, if you are ready on tonight, y'all do me a favor. Type your real name. Not your bay name. Not what your boo call you. Not your pet name. Your real name. Type your real name, and we're going to start. Hello, Wendy Key. Somebody said backsliders, <laughs> sinners have souls too. Yes, they do, my friend. <laughs> Listen, I am Pastor D, Unity Worship Center. I'm your Perry Pastor, the one, the only, that branded that name. And I'm ready to start tonight because some of you 
I've been asking this question while you're single. And so tonight I'll give you some clarity on some things. It's not all inclusive. I am not the know-all, be-all, but it may help you. I'm the Senior Pastor Unity Worship Center, Shreveport, Louisiana. I got all kind of stuff behind my name, whatever. Education, whatever. Pastor, whatever. But I'm here live so you can see me. So sometimes, let's start this scope. Sometimes you... Um, you ask yourself, why am I single? Why am I dealing, de dealing with this? Some of you are great people, great people, but you're still single. I'm going to start to scope this way. If you are single, type a one, type a one. If you are single, type a one, type a one, type a one. If you are single, oh, Lord, look at all these single people. Well, well, finally can come in. Yeah, my room's locked up now. Some of you have asked the question, okay, look at all these single people. Lord, 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 bless these single people to get them a great man and woman of God. In Jesus' name, amen. Stop them from running their mouth so much, God, because some of them talk too much. And they, Anyway, let's start the scope. So some of you ask the question, what's wrong with me? You know, that's often a question of single women or single men ask, and they say, what's wrong with me? Doesn't mean now that anything's wrong with you, but some of you have some checklists, and you've written checklists. I'm going to help you all tonight. Y'all stay with me for 30 minutes. You've written a checklist. Things you want or men you want or women you want and you have your checklist. You think you're Santa Claus. So you're writing a list and you're checking it twice. Some of y'all got some naughty and nice stuff on there anyway. But you have a checklist of what you want and the type you want and the man you want and the woman you want. But ask yourself a question. Is your checklist God's list? Is your checklist God's list? And that's what you need to understand. And sometimes you write out a list but you have never consulted God concerning your list. Oh, it's starting out the gate. Yes, tonight. You right now, you want them tall, fine, dark, handsome, six pack. Maybe that's not God's checklist for you. You want them to be like you want them to be. Men, you want them to be fine down to her hips, lips, fingertips. But she may be fine, but she may can't cook or spell her name. Is it your checklist that you're asking God for or is it God's checklist? And see, that's what starts the problem because a lot of you could probably testify not everybody that God may have already shown you the man but you dismissed the fact because he didn't look like something that you like oh yes men she didn't look like something you like you like a light skinned but God 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 trying to move you over to brown skin and now you need to ask yourself is it a checklist that that you want or is it a checklist that God's want I understand that on these checklists, there are some things that absolutely are mandatory that you need to have on this list. He or she needs to be a believer in Jesus Christ who is filled with the Holy Spirit. Second Corinthians 6 and 14. He or she must have a job. Mainly women. Let me park here. He must have a job because a Bible says the Bible says if a man doesn't work, he cannot eat. Second Thessalonians 3 and 10. He must be able, women, to lead his family in all the things of the Lord. Ephesians 5 and 23 through 25. And guess what, ladies? I like to throw this one in for free. He must be able to make you laugh. Yes. He should make you laugh, especially in the dating stage. He should be able to make you laugh. And this is going to be your partner. If you marry this man for the rest of your life, he should make you smile all the time. And he should not make you upset and cry all the time. He should always be in a posture where he makes you laugh. There should be something about this man. I'm going to come back to you, brothers, one second. That makes you laugh. When you see him, little things he does just makes you smile. Little ways he acts makes you smile. And I promise you, if you are dating a person this time of your life and you are dating and you're more upset than you are happy while you are dating, it's a telltale sign that you're probably in a toxic relationship. And so check this out, ladies and gentlemen. I got a lot to say in 30 minutes, so y'all catch me. Y'all might want to invite some followers. It's about to get real. Check this out. So I was reading the Bible, and I wrote this down. And, and I was reading the Bible. I came across Ruth 2. Go back and look at it yourself. Ruth 2. Check this out, y'all. Ruth was a widow who left everything she had to go follow her mother-in-law, Naomi, after her mother passed away. So she watched this, y'all. She chose to believe in Naomi's God. So now there was no indication or hope that Ruth would ever marry again. Naomi instructs Ruth to go into a relative's field and glean or to pick up scabs a week. 
and scraps of wheat. So she catches the attention of the owner of the field named Boaz. He tells her in roof two and eight, don't miss this, ladies and gentlemen. Do not glean in another field. I'm going to back that thing up because I'm going somewhere with this scripture. Roof two and eight. Do not glean in another field, nor go from here, but stay close by my young woman. I'm going to put a quarter in the meter and tell some of you the reason that some of you have not found the men or the man and woman of God that they have for you, that God has for you. I know I'm probably going to lose everybody after this one, y'all. It's because you're too busy gleaning in other people's field. Oh, Pastor D, please don't unfollow me. I'm sorry if you don't like it, but it's the truth, ladies and gentlemen. OK, some of you are too busy uh huh, gleaning in other people's field. You're too busy looking and trying to see if the grass is greener on the other side. So you're trying to go over there and you're trying to mess with Nook Nook's wife and you're trying to mess with his girlfriend. And God is trying to tell you, no, don't glean in other fields. And God is saying other words now. God is saying, don't you back off your standards. Oh, yes. That's the issue with some of you on tonight. You backed off your standards. You started settling for mediocrity. You started to settle for things that are less than you and are beneath you and people that are beneath you and relationships that are beneath you because you too busy. You wanted to glean in people's fields. Oh, you thought now because he bought her the big house, you wanted him to give you the big house. And some of you, the reason you are single, because you have settled to be a side chick. Oh, well. I guess I lost everybody tonight because y'all, I know y'all didn't like that tonight. You have settled to be a side chick. You settled to be the other woman and you got nerve enough to say, well, if I'm going to be number two, at least you're going to treat me like number one. Now, boo, if you ain't married to him, you're not number one. And that's the issue. Some of you are gleaning in other fields where you have no business to be in. Uh huh. And see what God is trying to say to you. Don't you quit being obedient to him and trust in him. All right. With the decision and the plans that he has for your life. I'm trying to help you all tonight. So God is saying, watch this, y'all. Don't give up being celibate because you feel lonely. Mm. Don't give up being celibate. Because you feel lonely. Don't look to the right or to the left, but keep your eyes on Jesus Christ and he'll send you the right person and stay close to God. And God will show you the destiny and the plans that he has for your life. And that's the issue on tonight. Some of you, ladies and gentlemen, you are in a place now. You're looking and gleaning in the wrong field. You said now because this man hurt me or this woman hurt me before. Now I, I don't trust anybody. Every man is a dog. Maybe boo you don't the dog catcher. Please, please stay with me tonight. I know sometimes y'all don't like the truth, but the truth is the truth now. So you keep asking God, God, why am I by myself? Sometimes you need to understand now. You keep asking God to give you blessings and bless you with the man and woman of God, but you are not even in the posture to receive what he really has for you. So you're asking God to invalidate who he is. And so you go back to James 4 and 3, and verse 6, to go through that whole litany of scripture. It tells you not to pray selfish prayers. So God says, why are you praying for something that you're not even qualified to receive yourself? But when you are closely connected to me, then I will show you every person in your life, every relationship relationship that invalidates my glory to remove yourself from it. And when you are so closely connected to God, God will put you in a position now where anybody just cannot walk into your face and just ask you for your phone number. They can't show up at church and try to sit by you and try to holler at you. No, boo, that's not how I roll now because you are not trying to be a date in this season of your life. You're trying to be a wife. You want to be a husband. And if that's not what you're doing, so you've already disqualified yourself from those prayers. If you just want to go out for a two for 20 dinner, you just want to go to the movies. You just want to come on, you know, you just want to go, go get some pizza. If that's what you're all about, then why are you praying for God to send you a godly man and a husband? And that's all you want. And see, that's the problem now. See, now what you're doing, you're gleaning in other fields so much. Well, I like him because he's cute. I like him because it is. Well, now I can get through with him. I can do what I got to do with him. I can send him home to his house. Uh-huh. Y'all not saying nothing. Yes. So now, boo, you can go back to your wife. Now I'm done with you. No. God is trying to get us in the season. I know I just said something to at least 20, 30 people on here because that's your issue now. Okay? You can't be gleaning in other people's fields. And so you say, well, I hadn't found him yet. 
And God says, I have a unique purpose and a plan for your life. Jeremiah 29 and 11. He tells you now that it's purpose and it's ordained for your life. And so if you are single and you feel like you haven't found the one yet, watch this, y'all. God just may be commanding that young man or that woman not to touch you. Let me back that thing up. Don't y'all go to the club and do it this weekend. You're saying, Presley, why am I single? Oh, why am I by myself? This is just for the people that's trying to hang in there now. Pastor D, why can't I find the godly man and the godly woman for me? Well, Jeremiah 29 and 11, maybe God is telling you now. God is saying to you, I've commanded them not to touch you or even talk to you. Because now I know the plans for your life. So I saw something on a potter's wheel and I saw a blemish on it and I didn't like what I saw. So I threw it back on the wheel to make it over again. Maybe God has not sent your man of God to your city yet, boo. Maybe God has not sent them to your church yet. Maybe you've never met him before. Maybe you have, but maybe God is so busy still trying to polish him for you that you're not ready for him. Maybe you are ready, but he's not ready for you. I'm helping y'all on tonight, y'all. OK, so sometimes you saying, well, why don't I have them? God is saying to you on tonight, maybe now I've commanded them not to touch you. Boo. That's why you can't go out there and play housey or housewife. OK, to a boyfriend, because that's why you can't go give benefits up for free. All right. Because now what you are doing, you are invalidating your destiny, ladies. And I'm trying to help you all. And see, so now. When I was single, I had to discover this for myself. I had to get this for myself. See, God said this, y'all. If you are not the one, then here it is. Touch not. Touch not. Oh, let's preach right there, y'all. Touch not. Touch not my anointed one. And so I want to say something to you, ladies and men on tonight. Maybe you are so anointed by God and God sees it on you. And you may not have even discovered the anointing that's over your life. That God says, touch not them. So I will not let any predators walk into their life in this season because I'm trying to shape them to get to the God given purpose and destiny. Oh, that's what you need to understand, ladies and gentlemen, on tonight. OK, and you need to trust God and know that he is ready to provide the man and God and the woman of God for you. OK, so here it is now. Why am I single? I want to help you. And I say this. Give me 15 minutes, ladies and gentlemen. So we're going to roll out. God is saying. The reason some of you are single is because you keep trying to date, make a date with men inst instead of trying to make a date with me. Let me say it again. You keep trying. OK, you keep trying to make a date with men instead of trying to make a date with me. Singleness is not a curse. Marriage is not the cure all. And God is saying every day I need you to make a date with me. And if they never take you out, you got me. Oh, yes. If they never say they love you, you got me. If they never tell you you look good and give you external stimuli and validation, you have me. And God is saying tonight, you stop trying to make a date with men and start to make a date with me. OK, watch this, y'all. And so God is saying this. He's looking now for full custody of your life, not just weekend visitations. And a lot of times you only visit God on Sundays when you get to church. Never crack your Bible up. Never been praying like you should. Should, not interceding and fasting like you should. And so God is saying the reason maybe that you are single is because you've been standing me up. Oh, I can shut the scope down right here. I just helped somebody. Some of you have been standing God up. God says, I'm waiting for you to call me. I'm waiting for you to come pray again. I'm waiting for you to open your mouth again. I'm, I'm waiting for you to get like you used to be. I'm waiting for you to get some carpet time. I'm, I'm waiting for you to call my name, boo. I, I, I miss you. I, I hadn't heard from you lately. And God is saying now some of you have stood him up. And that's why maybe you're single, because when you stand God up, what happens is this now. God is saying now you what you are doing. You treat me like you treat the other men and women in your life or the ones that have hurt you or backed off on you or ones that that um, actually betrayed you. OK. And God is saying now, watch this, y'all. You can't date me like you date the men in the world. Oh, that's good. Periscope. So now when you start to develop that intimate relationship with God, now, when you start to get in that posture now and you be, become intimate with him again, you'll start to do this every day where you'll start to develop some personal time with God and what God will start to do in your life. He'll start to expose those things in your life. Here, here it is, y'all, that you were open to. 
Okay, watch this, y'all. He will expose some things in your life that you were open to that you were allowed to set you back and ensnare and entangle you. And that's what you don't get sometimes. You say, God, why am I single? God said you are single because you have not let me come in. And now you have not created a vacancy for me to come in. And now I cannot expose the things that you need me to expose. So you refuse to allow me in. That's why you holding on to soul ties. Oh, yes. You refuse to allow me in. That's why you go back and sleep with him all the time. You hadn't seen him in a year, but he show back up in town. You go back to his house or you go back to the hotel with him because you hadn't allowed me to come in. That's why you are single, because now what you are doing now, you're so busy trying to go back to the familiar and you won't try to you keep trying to rehash your past and you won't allow me to come in and take that void and feel that vacancy in your heart. So that's why it's easy for you to go back and forth and mix and mingle back and forth and mix and mingle your relationships and standards when it comes to me because now you have placed this man or this woman on a pedestal now because of the past because you're familiar with them why because you slept with them you got children with them you may be or married to them you may have done some things with them that you're not proud of and God is saying until you create that vacancy and that void for me to come in Maybe you're going to remain single, ladies and gentlemen. Y'all don't catch it now. And God is trying to expose things that ensnare and entangle you because these things are setting you back. OK, and you don't understand. So Psalms 37 and 4 is the, is the scripture where you need to hang your head on tonight. OK, it tells you this. Delight thyself also in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. OK, let me tell you all something. When you go back and research it, research really the meaning of what it's saying now, it tells you to delight yourself in the Lord. He'll give you the desires of your heart. Here it is, y'all. What it's saying now, if you go back and look at it, it says delight yourself in the priorities of the Lord. Oh, in the priorities of the Lord. See, watch this, y'all. What the word of God is saying, delight yourself, OK, in the priorities of the Lord. And he's saying tonight, y'all, what is most important to God, in other words, should be important to you. Oh, see, when you get that, ladies and gentlemen, on tonight, when you delight yourself in the priorities of God, what's important to God would be important to you. And so you say, God, if it's your will that I be married, if it's your will that I meet this person, let your will be done. But if it's not your will, God, then I don't want anything that what's just hinders the will of what you want me to do. And then that's when you'll start to pray the prayers of God, because you can pray now. You're not praying amiss because you're doing everything in the will of God, ladies and gentlemen. So what's important to God starts to become important to you. OK, let's move on, guys. God is a man of his word. He's a man of his word and he's a man that shall not lie. I want to say this. Here go your real talk moment of the night. I'm going to give you all four or five. I'm going to get off here in a second. Here's the real talk moment of the night. Being brave enough to be alone frees you up to invite people into your life because you want them. And not because you need them. Oh, yes. Periscope. I'm going to say this one more time. Being brave. Enough to be alone frees you up to invite people into your life because you want them and not because you need them. So you said, boo, I don't need I, I don't need no man. I'm good by myself. And see what you need to understand is sometimes you got to do this thing alone. And so being brave enough, ladies and gentlemen, to be alone frees you up from telling people you need them. You don't need people, ladies and gentlemen. You need God. You don't need a man, boo. You need God's glory. You don't need creature comfort. You need God's glory. You don't need a woman, man. You need God's glory. You need more of God. And being brave enough to be alone, it frees you up from telling people that you need them when they walk into your life. If they ever walk out your life, you say, boo, I ain't need you no way because I had it going on before you got me. As a matter of fact, I gave you my number because I was being nice. Don't talk, get that hooded ratchet with it. But it tells you and it shows you something that you should never need them. OK. And see, sometimes you put them on such a pedestal and you replace their relationship on such a pedestal to the point. Now, if they walk out your life, you feel like if the whole world has hurt you, you feel betrayed, you feel dejected and depressed and has got suicidal tendencies. I don't care if you've been married for 40 years. Nobody on this planet should have that much power and authority over your life to make you have a bad day. If they walk case of Ross or Rock, whatever would be will be. Martin would tell y'all, don't let the door 
will not hit you where the good Lord split you. That's what y'all need to understand, ladies and gentlemen. So some of y'all say, why am I single, Pastor D? Get to the point. I'm going to get to the point then. Some of y'all single, because some of y'all say I'm single by choice. You single by choice. And let, and let me let you understand something. If you're single by choice, what you are saying, you're saying God is my choice to be single. See, if it's not God's choice, then why are you single? Sometimes you're single by choice because it's your choice. I'm going to get to some points and I got to get off here. You are single, some of you now, because you put up defenses. Okay? You put up defenses. You put up defenses now because some of you had some painful experience before. People have hurt you, lied on you, betrayed you before, and now you put up defenses. And you say, now I'm not going to go through that again, so I'll settle for just sleeping with them, but I just ain't going to never get that serious about them. Don't y'all play with me tonight because y'all know that y'all been there. So you'll put up defenses and you'll do some things. Oh, come on, ladies and gentlemen. You'll put up some defenses and you'll say, you know what, God? I, 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 I just don't want to do it no more. But see, some of the defenses in your life, it starts now when you were young in your childhood because some of you had some unhealthy dating practices, okay? Some of you were raised in other areas or raised in places of your life where you didn't have a father in the home or you didn't have, you know, both parents or you had, you know, raised by a single mother. And you start to put up defenses in your life because of what you saw in your past. And you put up the defenses based on what people saw or how you saw your up upbringing or how you were reared in your past. And I understand that sometimes. But ladies, ladies and gentlemen, the thing about it is this, you got to understand it. You got to let those walls down in order for God to come in. I want you to understand this. Everybody that God sends to your life will not hurt you. You cannot go forever thinking everybody's going to betray you. God's going to send you someone that's going to walk into your life and they're going to treat you with honor and respect out the gate. They're going to show you and they're going to prove to you, ladies, watch this now, that, hey, I know they hurt you, but you got to give me a chance to show you that I'm the one for you. He's going to walk in your life. He's going to keep it 100 out the gate. He's going to show you that he's the man of God for you. And here it is, ladies and gentlemen, one of my favorite real talk moments is this now. He understands that you have baggage, but because of the anointing and the call on his life, because he's an authentic man of God. He's ready to unpack the bags. But, oh, no, put the baggage on the table. I'm good. Okay, yeah, all right. You had a baby with that joke. I, I get that. Okay, I, I, all right. I'm going to take care of the child. Don't worry about child support. We good on that. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Oh, yeah, we did that. Mm, okay, yeah, I'm good on that. See, he's going to unpack the bags when he walks into your life because he has enough anointing over his life, boo to take you and your baggage on and here it is and he will take your children on and be a godly father to some of your children because some of your defenses in your life now oh i'm gonna bless y'all ladies you said pastor d i have these children and because of these children i'm not letting any man around my child oh yes and that's good to be that way you need to stay that way i understand it but you cannot block your child from everybody that comes into your life eventually God's going to send somebody. You're going to have to introduce your child, but let it be the right one. But what I want to say to you mothers on here, don't you take your whole life and you invest it solely in your children where you get 50, 60 years old and you become bitter against them because you never enjoyed your own life. Oh, yes, yes. And see, some of your defenses and hangups are excuses. Some of you hide behind your children because now you don't want to be hurt again, and I understand, but you cannot hide behind your children. And some of you never date another man because you keep saying, well, I got to go take my care of my kids. Boo, take yourself out to dinner sometimes by yourself. Sometimes take yourself and be happy. I assure you, I've counseled several people, many people, and they're older now, and they resent their children because they gave their whole life to their children, and they never took out time for themselves. Somebody needs to come on. Come on tonight, ladies and gentlemen. You need to be happy with your own life. The second one is this. Why am I single? Some of you now have unhealthy attractions. Don't leave me, y'all. Unhealthy, uh, unhealthy attractions. So here it is now. Some of you, when you act on your defenses, you tend to choose less than ideal relationship partners. Unhealthy attractions. Unhealthy. And so sometimes what you do, you establish unsatisfying relationships by selecting a person who is an emotionally available. Mm, golly, Pastor D, don't kill him on the scope like that. And so what you do, you start to establish unsatisfying relationships by selecting a person who is not emotionally available for you anyway. Mm, so now because this person is largely unconscious, what you do now, you have to bring, you often blame your partner 
for your fair relationship outcome. So now you start to feel devastated or hurt by the repeated rejections without recognizing that they are seeking out this pattern. You have sought out this pattern in your life and you upset about it because you keep going down the same pattern over and over again. And some of you, the reason that you go through this same pattern over and over again is because you have a fear of intimacy. Y'all will be split knowledge. I'm trying to help you tonight. You have a fear of intimacy. Yep. Because some of you want a relationship that enforces critical thought. Oh, that's a little bit too deep for y'all. That enforces critical thought. Uh-huh. And see what it does now, it enforces critical thought. And what you start to do now, some of you are literally, you'll start to replay the negative aspects of your childhood or all the past relationships that were bad before. Mm, yes, come on, ladies and gentlemen, okay? And so now it'll turn to a fear of intimacy. And see what happens now, over time, some of you develop these patterns and you develop some issues now where you can be positive about it. And now you're upset or you're fearful now that everybody that walks into your life is going to hurt you. But I want to say something today, amen, okay? I want to say something today. God is going to show you some people in your life in this season that are going to be authentically there for you and they're going to care about you, okay? They're going to love you and they're going to be there for you. And some of you have a fear all right, of intimacy in this regard, ladies and gentlemen. What you do now, everyone that walks into your life, you don't give them a chance because automatically you think they're going to hurt you. And so God sends you a great man, but you don't know how to deal with it because you just assume he's going to hurt you. You just assume because everybody else betrayed you, this person's going to do the same thing to you. So you never give your heart to this person. You never go out on a limb to see if this person will love you because you are scared of, of, of the fact. I'm sorry, guys, I knocked that down myself. You are scared of the fact of what could happen to you, okay? And some of you have a fear of intimacy, okay? I think I knocked that down, ladies and gentlemen. But you got to get over your past, ladies. Man, you got to get over your past. You got to get over everything, all right? in your past and move forward. And when you start to move forward, God tells you in Isaiah, I'll do a new thing in you. Now it'll spring forth. He'll start to make rivers in the desert. And so ladies and gentlemen, here it is, y'all. All right, here it is. I got some more Real Talk moments for you. I'm gonna let y'all get out of here. So here it is, y'all. Watch this, y'all. Single life, hear, hear me clearly. Single life should not be a diet of junk food. Uh-oh, it should not be a diet of junk food, okay? Because when you have a single life that's a diet of junk food, what you start to do now, you start to, watch this, y'all, you start to please your lower appetite. Did y'all catch what I said? Because junk food is not good for you. Single life is not a diet of junk food, ladies and gentlemen. You need to understand now, single life should be a time of preparation. And the main course, here it is, y'all, that earns your dessert. Let me back that thing up. Oh, your life, you are single, boo. And now you are the main course. And because you are the main course now, when he gets to you, boo, you was the main course when he got to you. But get with me now makes me the, the uh, makes me the dessert now. So now you understand now, boo, I'm not junk food. I don't have time. I'm not com coming in here to fulfill your sweet tooth, boo. I'm not here to sleep with you, man. That's not what I'm doing in my life, okay? I've done that before. Some of you said that before. I've met, I made those mistakes before. It's not a steady diet of junk food, boo, where I come in and, and, and you know, give you cavities. I know I'm sweet, but I'm sweet for my man. Oh, yes, I'm sweet for the husband that God has for me. I'm sweet. Brothers, y'all don't be that sweet. Y'all ain't sweet. Don't y'all say y'all sweet. Y'all be tough and nice or whatever, but don't be sweet, boo. But now, that's what you understand. And some of you, you accepting junk food. Oh, Pastor D, talk about it. You accepted junk food in your life. So you let them come into your life and they nothing but junk food. And they don't need to understand or they don't understand that you are the main cause. No, boo, you don't come into my life and you want to get with me and you take me out to McDonald's on the first day, boo, I'm not junk food. Oh, no, you can do that with them little old bitty girls over there. That's not how I roll. You can call me a gold digger, but in this season, I I'm not messing with a broke anyway. And I'm trying to help you ladies because if he walks into your life, he needs to respect you at the gate. But first, you got to learn how to respect yourself. And that's what you got to do now. Um, and understand what happens, ladies and gentlemen, is this, okay? You're not a sweet tooth. You're not OM candy. You know how you look. He don't need to tell you how you look. You're not somebody just, you know, just, just take some pictures for some credits on Facebook. You understand who you are. And when you understand the value of who you are, you don't need nobody to come into your life and ever, 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 ever 
treat you like arm candy. Oh, I'm helping y'all on tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Let me give y'all the next one. Here it is now. So you say, well, you know what, Pastor D, why am I single? Well, I'm going to tell you what you need to do. I say you need to be a bit of a challenge. Mm. Some of you are single, yeah, because you make it too easy for the devil to invade your territory. Oh, I'm going to let that one marinate. I, I, I'm going to let that one marinate in your spirit. Yes, y y you make it too easy for them. Yes, you make it too easy. Ladies, you make it too easy. No, no, no. See, I say this. Don't even show your hand at the gate that you're that interested in them. I say be a bit of a challenge. Because if you're a bit of a challenge, doesn't mean you're playing games. It just knows, or it means that you know your worth. And now, you know your worth. You know it's going to take a little bit extra effort to get you. Oh, come on, ladies. Come on. Boo, I don't play games. I just know who I am. It's just going to take you a little bit extra effort. See, you had it easy across the fence over there, and I know she slept with you in the first night. That ain't how we rolling, my man, all right? If you're not trying to be a husband, then why are you in my face? And see, now he has to put a little bit extra effort in your life to get you. And I want to tell you this, ladies. If he fights to get you, he will fight to keep you. Yes. If he has to work to get you, he will work to keep you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's what you understand. So y'all got to understand and get that, ladies and gentlemen. And when you now stop making it so easy for him, like, you listen to me. You can't be asleep with this dude. You can't be with this man. Ten days, seven days, you're sleeping with him. They don't respect you. And what men do, they walk into your life in the 30 days, 60 days, you done slept with them. They're going to tell you they love you. Yeah, they'll tell you that. Yeah, women will do it too. But they say they love you. But see, they don't love you. It's a game. All right. It's a game to manipulate who you are and what you'll start to do. He'll touch you a certain way and your body will give off this oxytocin and it'll give off these endorphins and you'll start to give off all these signals and it'll start to have a chemical imbalance. And ladies, you don't understand just by you being touched by a man will make some stuff go off on you that you never knew was in you. See, we're built a little different. Ladies, you are more. You know, that's why God told you y'all were skillfully made because he'll touch you a certain way. He'll touch your hand a certain way. Put his hand around your hip a certain way. And what you will do now, because all of these endorphins and oxytocin start going off in your head, your mind will literally trick you into a relationship that you don't even have. Yes, your mind will play so many tricks on you and you will literally think you're in a relationship that you're not in. And all he looking at you as is a booty call. Oh, I'm sorry. Y'all don't like that. Your mind has tricked you. It done played tricks on you. Your mind done told you he in love with you. So he whispered to it in your ear because you're in the act and you're doing what you have to do. And then now he turns around and say it now because now if he says it in that emotional moment, your mind is giving off that and your body is giving off all these signals now. Now you're going to think now that you're in love with this man and that he's in love with you. He's not in love with you. He's in love with what you keep doing with him. Oh, I know. I'm sorry to break it down, but that's the truth, ladies. I want y'all to understand that you're giving off all these signals and chemical. Y'all already understand you are more emotional. Love to you is very serious. And if they say it now, you will let your mind and your body trick you into something that's not even prevalent, not even in your life. But if you are a bit of a challenge, then they understand it's going to take a little bit extra effort to get you. You need to make it more challenging. You can't keep giving me wifey benefits and expect them. OK. Just stay in your life. Somebody say, I better preach. I'm trying, my friend. I want y'all to understand that because a man of God understands that he can't be in certain situations with you because he understands those intimate moments. If you look at a woman a certain way, if she's interested in you, it does something to you. Your mind is clicking. Your body is clicking. And you don't even understand why. It's because of how your body is built, ladies. Y'all need to go back and do some research on it. And see why now you are so emotional. You are emotional because that's the way God has built you. Don't run from it. Just go about it a different way. No, you can't be doing that to me. You can't be touching me. You can't be, oh, no. Don't y'all be inviting them over talking about, I want to cook for you. Y'all know what's going to happen if you go cook for them, boo. If you cook for them, you're going to let them hit it. Let me get to the next point. Y'all don't like the truth. I thought y'all like, y'all don't like the truth. Okay. No, boo. That's the truth. And some of y'all can't cook no way. Y'all just standing over the stove. And he just walking up to you. Oh, baby smells good. Put his hands on your hip. All he did was put his hand on your hip. And your mind went to another place. Because all you thinking now, oh, white picket fence. Man going to love me forever. Three kids and a dog. 
and your mind went to a whole other place. All he thinking about, I'm finna eat her nasty food so I can get it tonight and tell her I love her so I can come back tomorrow. Anyway, I'm trying to help y'all. I know every man ain't like that, ladies and gentlemen, but I'm trying to tell y'all, men that are ungodly, this is how they roll. And this is how they treat you. She can't finish her homework. I'm sorry, my friend. Watch this, y'all. Here's the real talk moment of the night. Check this out. I'm almost done. While being married is about becoming the wife you are meant to be, being single allows you to focus on becoming the woman you were born to be. Somebody should have threw their wig. She ministry should have been old dick, my friend. Why y'all didn't throw y'all wig? Did y'all hear what I just said? While being married is about becoming the wife you are meant to be, being single allows you to focus on becoming the woman you were born to be. Y'all should have threw your red wig, your green wig. I'm talking about you should have pulled your weave out when I just said that. Somebody should have ran. Did y'all? I'm going to say it one more time. Being married is about becoming a wife. That's true, y'all. You are meant to be. Being single allows you to focus on becoming the woman you were born to be. So in your singleness, you focusing, boo, on being the woman God made you to be. You focusing on being that godly anointed woman. And then you understand what a real man wants. A real man wants a woman that doesn't pray tepid and lukewarm prayers. He wants a woman that's sold out for Christ. A real man doesn't want a woman that shows her body and flaunts her body to manipulate men. He understands now that she understands that her body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. He understands that a real woman, she, t she carries a Bible. As an accessory to her wardrobe and that's what you need to understand ladies and gentlemen you don't get it sometimes what are these men going for what are they looking for a man of god does not want a woman that dresses like a street walker he wants a woman of god that acts like a woman of god that dresses and walks out and purports to be one and when she steps out in public she looks like one and so now you are prepared to be that woman of god because you said boo i already know what i'm working with but i was working with this so i could get you and now i got you boo let's do the doggone thing and that's how you got to focus. So now you focus on being the woman that God has made you to be. If you are single, don't focus on being a wife. Focus on being the woman. OK. And see, when you start to focus on the right things, what God will place you in a position is this. I said it before. Real talk moment number six, seven. I don't know where I'm at now. You work on the happy. God will work on the ever after. OK. You work on being happy with yourself. God will work on the ever after. You work on. Being happy before you get him. God will work on the ever after. You work on being whole before you get him. Because nobody should ever walk into your life and you say, nah, I'm whole now. Nah, boo, you should be complete before you meet him. See, that's the problem. Some of you, you accepting 2% men. Oh, yes. And so now he got 2% of whatever you need. So you're so desperate because your biological clock is ticking. So now he looks like Denzel. But when you get him by yourself, he act like Freddy Krueger. And then sometimes, yeah, y'all get so upset because now you found out the boy was RuPaul. Let me move on. I'm going to have to get off here because some of y'all don't like what I just said. And you get upset because you settle for anything in mediocrity. And now you're upset at the fact now you made a, cho a choice now based on emotional lust. Mm -hmm. And you based on your current circumstances because you did not want to be alone. You don't want to be a bridesmaid. You want to be the bride. Yes. OK, ladies, stop selling. Men, stop selling. Focus on the woman. Watch this, y'all, that you were born to be. Real talk moment. I posted this on my wall the other day. This is the last one. Let's shout and go home together, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Pastor D, your parent pastor on the ones and two. I'm going to say this to every lady, every man on here, but a real talk moment, he will type RTM. I wrote this on my wall the other day. One of the best things I ever said in my life. It's very simple. Don't miss it. You might catch it. First timers, if you on, follow me now. And I'm going to say this. Don't let the one that didn't love you keep you from the one that will. Ooh, my God from Zion. Mm, my God, Sundo today. Amen. Lights, they're not saying that. I'm going to say that one more time. Well, somebody should have tuned up on the keyboard on that one. Don't let the one that didn't love you keep you from the one that will. Stop focusing on your past. You will never get to Canaan with a foot stuck in Egypt. You will never get to your promise with a foot stuck in your past. You will never get to destiny. Keep dealing with this foolishness in, in your past, ladies and gentlemen, okay? When your past comes a knock and send it to voicemail, it has nothing new to say. It's the same old plowed out game that they played before. Y'all have to understand, my friend, y'all have to understand, 
Don't let the one. Now, Pastor D, I'm hurt, Pastor D. He hurt me, Pastor D. Pastor D, he, he was a pastor. Pastor D, he was a preacher. Pastor D, he said he loved God. Pastor D, we dated for five years. And you upset about the fact that you're not together. And he didn't love you. And you allowed him to keep you from the one that wants to love you. Ladies and gentlemen, come on now. Did y'all hear me? Stop focusing on everything. That was, a, that was a past. It's a weight that God has removed from your life. Okay? Y'all like that? And I want y'all to understand that. Don't let anybody take your joy and your peace and your sanity. Y'all got to stop focusing on the ones that hurt you. I want to say this. A lot of you on here, you've been hurt in your past. You've been divorced. You're still single because of the fact. Some of you get a little older, you say you never marry again. That is your choice. You can do that. Just be, you listen. But if you are single, are you older? Younger, whatever you are, and you choose to stay single, does not give you a license to go out and buy any kind of toys you want. Let me move on. Okay. Oh, uh, huh. Okay. Yeah, it does not give you a license to go out. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry. Hey, my friend. Thank you. It does not give you a license. A.T. Harris does not give you a license to go to the fun shop. Y'all stay on. Don't go, don't go nowhere now. It, you put me a B flat. Summers, hey man, I know you was on. Summers, let's, let's help him, Summers. That's my friend, y'all. It does not give you a license to go out and buy no dildos and all these vibrators. I'm gone, y'all. Y'all got to stop. You in violate you you in violation of, of your covenant with God. But Pastor D, at least I uh, no, it does not. Anyway, y'all don't like scopes that's real, cause some of y'all that's your problem. You say why am I single? You single boo because you having sex with yourself at night by yourself. So why God need to send you a man to please you when you keep pleasuring yourself? So you don't took the pleasure out of him. You don't please you don't messed up. Mm. And you do so much sometimes. That now nobody can please you because you don't have a nymphomaniac type of spirit the, your whole life and you don't know how to release that foolishness. And so nobody can please you because you now act like a porn star. You don't understand how spiritual warfare is so real that some of y'all don't catch it. It's real, y'all. Touching yourself and pleasing yourself and you watching movies, men and women. And you watching flicks and stuff in the middle of the night and you trying to say what they do and do what they do. And you understand why, why you single, you, you single, why you think you single? Ain't nobody please you. Okay. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm sorry. Okay. If y'all don't like realness, don't come on my scopes. When I do relationship scopes, I don't, I don't hold no punches. I don't hold any punches. So, there's a lot of y'all on here tonight, too. There's 1,087 people on here. Bless y'all. I love y'all. But it's the truth. And see, now... You allow now all these spirits to invade you, ladies. You are the receiver. And you want to know why soul ties are so real in your life? You got to look at what you've been receiving. Mm. Yeah. And see what happens now. Spiritually, you don't get it sometimes. When you're sleeping with somebody and having sex with somebody that's not your husband or your wife, technically... You have married them in the spirit. I ain't going to go with my soul tie scope tonight. But that's what you don't understand. You have, you, now, you have now made a spiritual soul tie with this person. And you say, I'm not married. You are married, boo. You done been married five, six, seven, ten times. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't want to bust up. That's the real talk of moment of the night for real. I can prove that. That's, that's, yeah, you've married them. Basically, you've married them. And you're wondering why now your body all out of whack and you can't keep your emotions in check. And you wonder why you can't get over certain things because those spirits have connected to you. You have received this. Okay? But tonight, it's time to move on. It's time to do the right thing. Her husband walked out on her. Yes, that's true. They control you like a puppet. Manipulate your mind. It's toxic, ladies. Okay? I love y'all, Periscope. I'm alone. I got to get off of here. It's been a blessing on tonight. If you've been blessed, type of one. Talk, yes. Talk about it, Psalmist. Yeah. Listen, I, I, I'm, in, I'm in a series 
Y'all stay with me for four, four or five minutes. I'm going to say this. I'm in a series at my church with my members. I was raised Church of God in Christ. I'm, I'm non-denominational now. But God put it in my spirit for the last two months, and he released me just this Wednesday night. I'm doing a series on power and deliverance. That's all I'm preaching about for the next four weeks. Power and deliverance. Pentecost Sunday is coming up this Sunday. I believe it's time for God to break some yokes and destroy some yokes in our life. And I believe God can do it for us. Thank you, guys. God bless you. It's been a great scope. And I believe now the reason some of you are such in toxic situations or relationships because you don't know what to do. And you need to understand that these things can be broken and they need to be broken. And it's time. Uh, so even if you don't want that person, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go back and do another soul tie scope because sometimes you don't understand marriage is a good soul tie. Some soul ties are good, but there are some soul ties that we don't even really discuss that we should as, as, as an example. I want to say something to you, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. When you are dating a man, ladies, and you start to take care of a man and you are taking care of this man and paying his bills and he your boyfriend, you paying his apartment note, paying his card note, foolishness, foolery, foolery. That's a soul tie. Don't even say you slept with him. Financially, you have tied yourself to him. Okay? There are a lot of soul ties. Mm-hmm. Yes. That's just an example. So you don't understand. And my friend said, yeah, that's not God. My friend, that's true. And that's why it's a soul tie, because it's not of God. Just an example. I, I need to go back over my soul tie series. Um, but she's right, you know, what will happen now, your mind can be manipulated or tricked. It can be a soul tie. They can have your mind. Same way when it comes to uh, manipulation, witchcraft, things, and mind control in the church. They don't have necessarily have to sleep with you to control your mind, but you allow your mind to be taken control of this manipulation. They have tied your soul. It's a lot that we need to get as believers in this season of our life. Ladies, I want to encourage you. I'm done. I want to encourage you. You're strong enough to do it. You got enough power to do it. You can move on. You can. Okay. I'm going to keep talking. First time is type of one. If you're on for the first time, type of one. Unitywc.com. Go to my website. But you can do it, ladies. But what you cannot do. Okay. I, I want you to understand this. I'm still going. Thank you first time. And I would that you follow me. I want you to understand this. Godly men that walk into your life, they walk into your life to be leaders. It is not your job to be the circus trainer and try to teach them how to lead you. That's not your job. I feel that a man of God should be at least three steps ahead of you. And he's putting his hand back. He's leading you because you walk in this path together. He should be spiritual when you meet him. He should know the word of God when you meet him. He should be praying when you meet him so he can plead the blood of Jesus over you. When you get to acting crazy and getting into your emotions. Yeah. That's the man of God that you need. You shouldn't meet a man and now you got to help him get saved and you teaching him scriptures and teaching him how to pray. You speak in tongues and he don't even know what that is. No, it's unequal yoke. And that's where you mess up a lot of times that you keep trying to push up onto somebody that God is trying to pull away from you. And that's what you need to understand. I say it all the time, lady. He should lead you out the gate. There is no situation where you need to be leading him. Okay. You are coming now because God made you and molded you to be a help meet. So you are to help meet, help meet some of the needs, help him. You are to pray and intercede for him as well. But you are not to lead your house. I don't know. Y'all don't like that big S word, submissive. But you have to be submissive in of yourself also. But the word of God does not tell you to submit to your boyfriend. It tells you to submit to your husband. And you can't submit to a boyfriend, boo. That's not biblical. You can't put covenant in a daily relationship. It's not biblical. It tells you some wives submit to your own husband, not somebody else's husband either. And when you understand that, that he should be a leader when you meet him, it's not your job to come try to get him saved. One of my best real talk moments I've ever said on Periscope is the issue with some of you is this. Some of you are dating your assignment. <laughs> Pastor D, you know, the worship center. I'm out of time, but I'm not out of word. Some of you are dating your assignment. Mm. He's not your destiny. He's your assignment. <laughs> He's not your destiny. 
here's your assignment. Maybe God was trying to put you in a position when you met him to push him over to men that were more seasoned where he can be teachable to help him stay on the straight and narrow and see you trying to make him out to be your boo. Maybe he's not. And then when you understand that, you will look at the joker tonight and say, no, nah, man, we done. Why am I wasting my time? Be very discerning. Because now, a lot of times, women marry men that they thought were meant for their life when God was saying all along, I was just putting you in their life to make, maybe help them get a closer walk with me. But I wouldn't tell you to marry them, boo. I see it all the time. Then they're upset and frustrated now because they're with somebody that God did not even ordain for their life. <laughs> just saying. How many women can be honest and say they've done that? You fall in love with them and you upset at, at the fact now you're in love with them. M made me turn to God. Wow. Yes, my friend. And a man that's teachable, last point, a man that's teachable, he's teachable because when he's teachable, he will admit his frailties and his faults to you because he's willing to learn from his mistakes. But if he's not teachable, he'll keep lying to you to cover up his mistakes. Okay? But teachable means I want to learn from my mistakes and not do them over again. Not teachable. He's going to lie and he's going to keep doing it and you're going to keep letting it happen. And what they like to do, you'll get in an argument with the man and he'll flip the script and turn the tables. Tell, tell sign if they're lying, he'll start to turn an argument against you where you know you've done nothing and now you stay so emotional. It's a trick, ladies. You're so emotional about it, you walk away and you act like it never happened. And then they try to sleep with you that night to get your mind off the issue and tell you they still love you in spite of what they've done. See, that's not teachable. Teachable said, I did it. I'm owning up to it. I'm sorry. Let's get it straight. See, women, they are more inclined to forgive you when you tell them the truth because you are built inherently to be long suffering. I'm blessing y'all better than y'all responding. OK. OK. Man, just tell me the truth. And when you tell them the truth then they good, okay? I love y'all, Periscope. I'm out of time. My friend is on. Y'all get on her scope. She ready to talk to y'all. Yes, my friend, I'm on a, don't fall for the emotional blackmail. Don't fall for the emotional blackmail. That's what it is. Emotional blackmail will get you in trouble. It will mess your life up. Don't do it. Periscope, I love y'all. Y'all do me a favor. How many of y'all follow me on Facebook Live? If you are... Don't say nothing, but if you are not following me on Facebook, type a one. I'm going to tell you my channel because I'm starting to do Facebook Live as well. I love you, women of God and men of God. But follow me, Pastor D. Lewis, L-O-U-I-S. You can go follow me on all those social media channels. Go to unitywc.com. Register for my conference. If you can't come, you'll get a digital download of the service, regardless if you come or not. Uh, Facebook um, is Detrius D. Lewis, L-O-U-I-S. Go follow me. Uh, thank you, Psalmist. Y'all follow me on those social media channels. Uh, follow me on Twitter, Pastor D. Lewis. Um, I'm following Shonda Rams on Periscope. Y'all, this is the first time I ever seen her on. Oh, hey, Shonda. Um, <laughs> follow me on Instagram, Pastor D. Lewis. Um, please, y'all, I'm on Snapchat, guys. I don't know how to work it yet. My young people are going to teach me how to work it in my churches. It's just sitting on my phone. I'm going to do Snapchat one of these days. But you guys get on Facebook. Would y'all do me one favor? We're going to get off of the scope. Could you share it so your, so your people can watch the replays? And if y'all do me a favor, um, I didn't say it. thank you. And follow me on Facebook. If you go to my page, would you do me a favor and go share those videos across your pages as well? It's about Destiny Killers. And I want a lot of people to be able to you know, watch it. And you guys, what you're doing, you're promoting the platform and you're helping us. Know, get the gospel out to millions, okay? Because Facebook has 1.4 billion followers. 
And I believe God is going to put us before the throne of, of, of millions, before people. And I thank God for that. With your help, we can accomplish that goal. I love y'all Periscope. Y'all my family. Y'all have always been so kind to me. Our conferences are going and coming up. If you want to sow into our ministry, please sow into our ministry uh, for our conference. Every seed that you sow goes to the ministry, not Pastor D's pocket. I don't take the money to buy rims. You can sow at unitywc.com. You can help our conferences. And I would, at least 20 to 30 of you would sow something tonight about tomorrow to just help our conferences. We're trying to do it debt free, um, but we need a little help. So if you can sow at unitywc.com, thank you. I would appreciate you for doing that. I don't believe you have to be in a prophecy mode and prophesy to people to get them to help you and assist. Just ask for what you need. Any prophet that only hears from God during offering time, ladies and gentlemen, you got a problem. Did y'all hear what I just said? Conference is June 2nd, June 3rd in Shreveport, Louisiana. I'm preaching night one. It's going to be packed. Y'all better get there. June 3rd, Bishop R.C. Blakes is coming from, uh, from um, New Orleans. We've already booked it. It's done. My next one is going to be a ladies' night out. Men, you can come. Trust me. If you're coming, just let us know. Send us an email. We'll make sure you get some good seating. Real Talk Kim is coming July 15th. First time she's been in Louisiana, Shreveport. She is coming. Um, we're, 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 we're talking about a singles conference, my friend. She's coming July 15th. Real Talk Kim is coming. So, uh, guys, listen. It's booked. No, listen. It is not something that we're just making up a philandering of the fairy tale. No, everything's been booked. Everything's done. Plane reservations, hotel. My staff did all of that last week. They're coming. Because y'all know how some people say, oh, well, no, you know, such and such didn't show up. No, trust me. I don't roll like that. June 2nd, June 3rd, Shreveport, Louisiana. I'm preaching night one. Bishop Blake's is night two. We have a women's empowerment session. I got off the phone today. Katrina Thomas has a Make Me, Mow Me group. That's phenomenal. You want to come. If you can come June 2nd, June 3rd, trust me. It's for men and women. We say women's conference, but it's going to be something for everybody. July 15th, Real Talk Kim, Shreveport, Louisiana. If you need more information, go to unitywc.com. Trust me. You want, if you can't come, at least get the digital download of Real Talk Kim for registration. At least get two sermons for the women's conference for, the, for your registration. Okay? It's going to be in HD. It's not going to be, you know... With some of these old TVs that you have, it's going to be an HD video. You're going to be glad you did it. It's at Unity, W as in woman, C as in cat dot com. I would that you guys would register. I love you. Y'all have a good. Hey, McCon, I see you, my friend. Y'all have a good night in Jesus Christ. My mother coming to one of them. I don't know which one she's coming to, but she's coming. All right. And my mama don't sit in the back. My mama sit on the front somewhere close to her son. Because my mama like to shout when I preach. Y'all have a good night. <laughs> In Jesus Christ, I'll talk to y'all soon. Peace out.